pleasure of hearing. And I believe we are there. Uh, no, I was not late. I was early. Good, good, good try. Good try. But no, I was actually early. Uh, and I threw that up as a test because as I mentioned, uh, OBS uh, failed me, what, two days ago? Uh, and so I was expecting OBS to fail again. Uh, and so that was kind of my stand-in screen, uh, expecting OBS to fail. But for whatever reason, OBS decided to work, uh, which is great, but also doesn't answer why OBS didn't work. It's just, it runs purely on Slate. I, I don't know, man. I, I, have, I have surrendered to OBS, right? Uh, like, I was, I was fully ready to, to just not have a stream today if OBS wasn't going to cooperate. So uh, I don't have anything in particular planned to demonstrate uh, because I believe uh, the stream from two days ago was pretty solid uh, as far as things that you need. Right now we're focusing on levels like one through five. Uh, a couple people in here are around three. Uh, I know three is KASLR. I'm looking for Twitch. Is there something in particular that you are stuck on. I get nothing. Wait for the Twitch delay. Level five hard. Level five is not hard. All right. Like what is hard about level five? I mean, I know there's one thing that is is kind of interesting. Can you describe what you're stuck on with level five? Are you demo? How can we make the kernel oops on five? All right. That's fair. Um, we can do that, but I believe there will be some relevance for the people on level three that are also trying to oops. So we can look at level five here. Maybe? Yes. Okay. So we will move whatever do.c we have to garbage. Sweet. There isn't. No, there's not a do dot c today. That's like a first. Uh, I think I know, but I'm lazy in implementing it. Yeah, you know the fork sys call is really hard, guys. All right, I agree. Right, calling fork impossible. All right, so let's do a couple things. Let's uh, vim our do dot c over here on the right. Except I need to split this again. We'll do it this way. Mm, delete whatever that was. Cool. All right. So we're going to have some type of main function. This much we know. Uh, at this point, we probably have some understanding of how the program works. Now, unlike level, well, level three is a use after free. Yes. Uh, I'm not going to go into how to use the use after free because that, I feel, was like diagrammed really well in the last stream unless somebody has a specific question. And what we see here is we can write to the allocation with what, 501. Uh, we can free with 503 or 5703, and then we can read from the allocation with 5700. Cool. All right. So the first thing that I want to do is have some file descriptor, and that is going to be what happens when I open uh, proc kheap, and we're going to open it, read write. Someday I will remember all of these header files, but today is not that. Oh, I just realized. Bam, bam, bam. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, what else do I need? Sys stat, uh, F control. All right. So we got these. We can open this. Uh, we're going to call ioctal. So I need sys 
I octal that H. It helps if, when I say it, I also type it. All right. So we're going to open this. Uh, then the question is, what kind of error do I want to cause, right? What, what am I trying to do here um, that is going to break or fail? Well, I know from earlier levels, since this is a use after free, one of the things I might want to do is obtain the next pointer. Now in level five, this is a hardened next pointer, but it's still a value that I may uh, be interested in. And we can obtain that. Oh, we got to build our, our struct again, man. Uh, struct request. Uh, my request consists of what a pointer, what is it, a pointer and then a size? I don't remember. On um, iOctal, it copies here. This is copy from user r twelve one r one plus c eight, and then the amount is r twenty eight. R twenty eight is r thirty. Copy from user into r three. Okay, yeah. So it is pointer and then size. Uh, somebody says, sorry, I hope this is not off topic. Someone is capable of developing exploits, but the most important is how to find and develop these exploits. That is what you're trying to learn. Uh, I'm not sure what's being asked. Okay, I'm just going to carry on. Uh, you can ask that uh, in another way. Maybe we can respond there. So, uh, we have this. What I want to do is I want to free this, and then I want to read it. So we can free it with hex 5703. Let's do that. And I need to give it a request. My request is a, I need standard int. I'm going to use everything as a uint 64t. And then this is a size, call it length. So then I need struct request request, and then I need char buff, and we'll make it a page. It doesn't need to be a page, but a page sounds nice. Okay, then our kind of default setup that we've had here, our request, Pointer is going to equal buff, and request length is going to equal uh, 1d0. 1d0 is a specific number. It is a number that is checked uh, when we copy here. Right here. When they read into, uh, I think Ida shows that one a bit cleaner with the struct. You can see that it's a size. Mm -hmm. Because there's one thing I'm not going to do. It's properly use a deep pointer. I'll just open up another one. Yeah. And so here we see the request size. Uh, if it's greater than 1d0, uh, then we short circuit. You kind of fail with a negative number here. Uh, and so that's you know, 1d0 is the biggest that we could use for that size value. All right, let's catch back up here. Uh, something about how to do vulnerable, vulnerability research and use fuzzers. I'm not, I'm not sure where, where we're all going here. Uh, th this is topically like what we talk about here are vulnerabilities because you have to know how they work in order to identify, like if you run a fuzzer and find a bug, does that bug equal a vulnerability, right? You don't know that unless you understand how bugs become vulnerabilities. And so it's kind of all one and the same thing. Um, yeah, the other comment here on Twitch is that there is an applied vulnerability research course that's going to be ran in the fall, uh, which does cover a bit of that. Um, like topically, they're going to kind of take that approach as far as, all right, here is how do we do target selection? How do we uh, harness targets? How do we assess uh, the kind of value of bugs that are found? Uh, but yeah, that's not, not what we're doing today. So I have the struct, uh, I have my pointer set, I have this, that is looking good. So we can run this IOCTL and at this point, uh, we have freed the allocation. 
right here, we have created an allocation, right? Not anything too crazy. Uh, now, once I freed it, I probably want to uh, read what that pointer is, right? It could be a value that I want. And we can do that with, we said it was what, hex 5700? Yes. yes, copy to user. Uh, so 5700, we give it request. And then I need to know where is that next pointer. Uh, if we have been following along, we know the next pointer is stored midway through in the slot. Uh, in this case, it's going to be, uh, we'll call it next pointer, and it needs to be a uint 64t star, and that's going to be buff plus ox1e8. And we can cast that as a uint 64t star. Maybe that'll make the compiler happy. Uh, so then we should be able to say print f leak percent llx make this pretty and we give it whatever is at next pointer now one of the things i'm going to do is i'm going to end this with i think get char should work puts blocking uh, one of the problems that I've kind of seen people run into, OXE8, did I math wrong? What am I thinking of? Oh, yeah, because this is 1D0, so it's E8. E Good call. Um, is people run their exploit and they don't necessarily know how to attach the debugger to it at a specific point. Uh, we've seen this trick with Python, right? Just have it read, have your exploit read from standard in and block until you give it a character, right? This is the equivalent of the Python, let's throw input in there. Uh, and then we can attach the debugger afterwards. All right, start VM over here. I just wanna make sure that I'm getting a, some type of reasonable value here. And before I, yeah, that should be fine. So we VM connect. We haven't gotten to the leak yet, but we are starting there. How'd we do? Okay, we failed. Why did we fail? Um, 5700 reads to the request. We are reading that. I don't know. Uh, so how would you guys figure out why this failed? What do you think? I know what I want to do, but I figure I'll ask you. I don't know why I failed for the record. Right now we're trying to... I malloc yep. by opening Kehi. Yep. I free it yep. right here. Uh, I then try and read from the, so this is a use after free, yep. where I'm reading that ideally next pointer. Now Twitch chat told me that the offset that I want is this right here. Uh, which is E8, uh, but I'm getting no. Uh, so one question is check the, or one comment is check the return values of ioctal. Is the Which we, we could do. There's gonna be a lot of waiting on this VM. So we will I guess we can do that in code int ret i after one equals percent d new line give it ret and we'll do the same thing down here that seems reasonable Don't tell me about warnings. Do that 
cannot see. All right, we are there. We fire and go. It all worked, but this leak isn't happening. So that's that's no good. Is it like murdering the VM each time? We are murdering the VM. Let's see. So we're calling 5700. Copy to user. That makes sense. That should work. Where are KMEM cache free? It is mad at KMEM cache free. We look there. That is interesting. Okay. But the. The ioctal here was good. Oh, I know what I did. I did this uh, earlier. This takes a pointer. This takes a pointer. Recompile. Easy to miss. It is easy to miss. That's why I missed it. <laughs> Come on. This whole stream is going to be waiting for VM to freaking do it. Okay. Just as proof, we did recompile. We have a runner, and now we have a, a value that is not in zero. That that makes sense. Okay. We're still not happy there. It is not happy about anything. The VM is just going to forever not be happy. Why is the VM not happy there? Hmm. I'm just going to say whatever on that. Now, the question is, how do I get it to leaks? Uh, get to oopsies. Uh, waiting for VM to restart is also 90% of my time on levels three and four. Yeah, I'm not I'm not super keen on um, how that is, is working at the moment, but it is. Okay, so this right here gives me the mangled, uh, what do we call it, next pointer. Okay. I actually don't need this, but whatever, we have it. Uh, uint 64t, we call it mangled next pointer, and that is going to equal what we had right there. Okay. Now, the next thing that I want to do, because our strategy, if we go back to the grand uh, grand slides in the module right here, uh, how do we deal with the hardened um, tree list? Well, we need to create these scenarios. One where I either like get a pointer from trying to leak a pointer uh, somebody says, the problem is your request should have uBuff in size, no pointer. The buffer, I don't think that's right. It's a, char it's a pointer to the buff. Like, I don't trust you, Twitch. Uh, like, you've steered me wrong too many times. Uh, so, uh, we can, right now what we've done is we've created a scenario where we malloc we freed, we have a mangled next pointer, and we've leaked the mangled next pointer to this pointer, address of pointer, uh, and then the random value, right? That's what this mangled next pointer is. So we've done this scenario, right? Uh, but we also want to have this scenario uh, where the value that we're reading uh, is uh, address of pointer uh, XOR with random. Um, oh, you're saying that because that's a pointer instead of a char star? That's kind of a whatever. That's that's proper proper C. Like if we set that to that, it's it's the equivalent, right? I'm not losing anything there um, in types. 
it's it's fugly C, but it's not uh, C that won't run. Okay, so I need to create this other scenario uh, that we see here on the slides, where my use after free is pointing to the last element of uh, the free list. So what we need to do is allocate a bunch of things. Uh, int i equals zero, i is less than, we'll go with 16, uh, i plus plus. Uh, this could probably be eight. Let's go eight. Does anyone know where I'm getting those numbers from? Why it needs to be a multiple of eight? Right, uh, the comment was there's eight objects in the slab. So uh, in here, what we're going to do is we're going to open, again, proc kheap, and we're going to open it, read, write. Uh, this should open or allocate uh, eight objects, um, uh, which will fill the slab. Okay. Now this is where our next like scenario comes in. There's two things that I need to do. Um, I need to oops the kernel and I need to leak the mangled uh, address of pointer with null with the random value. So I need to do both of these things. And we can do both of them. Because right now, if we've successfully allocated everything here, I should be able to free one object. And that would be ioctal of FD OX5703. And then we give it request again, because the slot that I was using up here has been reused, right? Because we freed it, and then when we allocated eight times, uh, the slot that I was referencing from this file uh, should be reused, so we can free that. And then we can do the same thing here, where we can read from it again. So we do the read, whatever, we can make this IOCTL3 get printed out. I don't need to redefine next pointer, but I do need to redefine its value. Uh, this is um, adder pointer XOR with uh, random. I don't know, leak two. <laughs> like, like, like you get a, you can run into a problem there. Uh, leak two. And if I have both of these values and I did my math correctly, what should I be able to obtain? Yeah, like we got to somehow prove that I've done this. Uh, who needs functions to not repeat yourself? Yeah, I don't believe in functions. Okay. So I have uh, address of pointer, XORed with some pointer, XORed with random. And I should also have the address of pointer, uh, XORed with a random, XORed with null. So if I take these two and I XOR them together, I should get a pointer. Uh, let's see if we can do that. We print f uh, predicted pointer, and we percent llx. We do that with uh, mangled next pointer, xor with leak two. All right. Let's see if we get something that looks reasonable here. Go over here, we will compile our d.c. Looks good, are we in the VM? No. Readability equals zero. 
fine, fine, guys. We can, we can define these little functions that have like three lines in them. All right. Void. Read buff. Then it's going to take an int, which we'll call it file descriptor. I guess this can return nothing, because why would I do that? It's going to read from FD. Yep, that's uh, that's pretty good. I, I feel like we've improved improved a lot here by switching this one I octal call to a function. Okay, uh, where did that come from? Right here. Mm -hmm. And you want to change this other ioctal call to read buff? Where is it? 5700. Okay, this needs to be read buff. Oh, we're we're making we're making functions now. We we've gone we've gone too far, guys. Okay. Oh, that means I need to have a free function. Okay, so let's let's do that. Void um, free free. What do we want to call this? Uh, free slot int fd. Okay. Uh, what is this one going to do? Well, it's going to, oh, it's going to 5703. It, 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 yeah, it's, it's going to do, it's going to be huge, guys. Okay. So we're going to, we're going to do this. This needs to be free. Oh, free slot fd. Yeah. I, I feel like, I feel like we're making making big progress here. And then we print f uh, free slot equals percent d slash m ret. And up here, this now needs to say read buff. Okay, okay. We, we can't do this anymore. This now needs to be free slot. We're real coders now, exactly. Okay, we free the slot, we read the buff. What do we do over here? Oh, well, we can't have whatever this is. What is this doing? Oh, this needs to be a function too, right? Uh, this is going to be, this is going to return a unit 64T. Uh, and this is going to be read next pointer. And it's going to take a file descriptor. I feel like this is time well spent. Fortunately, I didn't have anything I was super keen on, on doing today. That is our next pointer address. And then it's going to return whatever happens to be located there. And so now our mangled next pointer equals read next pointer. You guys asked for functions. Okay. Now we can print it. I do. Is it okay if I have open here, or should we wrap that in a function? What do, what do you think, Twitch? Is open okay? We can leave open. Okay. All right. The, 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 the class is spoken. We don't. We don't need to add more extraneous lines. So uh, we're, we're going to leave open there. We, we, we do that. Okay. So then we freed the slot, which is fine. Uh, we read the buffer. Okay. Uh, then I, oh, we can't have this, right? We got to, we got to read next pointer. Does read next pointer need a file descriptor? It actually doesn't. Okay. And so this is our leak two. We've made it. I don't even know that that saved any lines whatsoever. No, it won't. 
But if it makes Twitch feel better, then that's fine. Now it's all sorts of grumpy because I declared request down here and we have these functions that are relying on this value. And so now I have to use globals. Right. Then these have to exist all the way up here as globals because that's that's good programming. Well, we still are, are referencing something that we shouldn't. Uh, what are you mad at me for? 18 request. Request is a global. You have to know what request is. Oh, that's in. Oh, no, no. I did irrupt, not request. Uh, that's fine there. This needs to go up higher as a global. TCCW, do.c. Oh, and now we don't know what ret is. Functions, man. It is, it is just way more work. Oh, no, it's too late, you see. You see, we've, got, we've gone down the path. We all care. Who cares? Do the leak. Just tell me how to get the flag. You know, I, I don't. I don't think that's that's the way to do it. Does that look like a reasonable pointer? Reasonable address. It does look like a reasonable address. Is there a way we can verify that? I mean, we're in practice mode, like, yeah. VM debug and like, uh, we can VM debug and look at stuff. So I really am curious why the VM is, is really not happy because we aren't corrupting anything at this point. You're still really mad at freefall? Yeah, it's that cash free man. Oh, of course it's old. No, no, this is the current. Mm -hmm. uh, let me see. Where is it? Mm -hmm. Can I cash free? Oh, three one B. Someone says yes. F F F F. Um, that doesn't that doesn't get us past why we're why we're dumping there. Mm -hmm. I don't see it. We're, dump, we're dumping on the free, but I don't see why. Because it should all be valid from here. We haven't messed anything up. Right, we're just reading. Uh, we haven't overwritten anything. But what are you going to do? Give me... Next day, yes. Kill that pain. Go over here. VM restart. All right. So my claim is, is that's a valid pointer. I don't know that it is. We can take a look. But now we really, uh, really want to discover the fork syscall. Right? It's it's going to be going to be pretty deep here. So. Uh, now, how now to do an oops? Well, we're gonna we're gonna call fork here, right? And before I fork, I am going to now purposely purposely break that next pointer. All right? Where is now that we have all these functions? It's very clear what I need. See, now I need a right next pointer function because my next pointer isn't defined in my global space. Oh, this is this is great, guys. Our next pointer is here, and we will set our next pointer equal to the the val uh, unt uh, 64 t avoid. Okay. So now we have our set next pointer. That means I also need a write buff. 
So I need to do that now. And we write buff to a file descriptor by calling 5701. All right, so that isn't too bad. Now what I want to do is I want to set the next pointer to be, I don't care, we'll use Fs. Right. Uh, then we will write the buff on FD. And so what we have done here is we are purposely corrupting the next pointer. What do you think we're going to do down here? Do I want to no, free? No, we want because we've already free. So we want to, yeah. All right. So we need to allocate some stuff. Okay. So that means what did we call our magic function? Oh, we don't have a magic allocate function. Shoot. I'm going to use open, guys. Please. Please understand. Please understand. <laughs> yes. Uh, we open proc k heap. Uh, read write. And we do that twice. And then for good measure, uh, we'll have a while loop, uh, an infinite loop down here. Because we expect this to crash. Now, one of the problems that we'll run into here is this VM has one CPU. So you remember way back when we were in uh, MicroArch, right? And we had this like, oh, there's like racing and contention. People are using sleep and wait. And like everyone was like, I don't know, man. People just throw this stuff in here. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. It turns out the wait function does serve a purpose, right? Uh, and this is an example of one of those scenarios where we would want to use wait. Uh, Why? Because then it will give priority and CPU to the other thread. Yes. Uh, I want to make sure that the parent thread waits until this child process here finishes its work. Right. So uh, we can just wait with nothing, with null. But I do need to include... this down here. And if we print F hello world over here, or the puts, if we see puts and we see an oops message, now let's make this sleep for some like crazy uh, long time. Then sleep comes from, this one I do know, uh, unit standard. Okay. Well, we didn't define val on our set next pointer. Those dastardly functions, man. It's more areas for a typo to occur. All right. So we have that. We will VM restart, give it a wait. We will VM connect. Over here, we can VM logs. SSHD is up. Whoa, we got it. We got an oops in the child process. We saw hello world. So that means that execution is continuing past okay. yeah. this, and we're probably sleeping over there. If we were to connect in here and, and take a look and run PS, we should see that process is still alive, right? Mm, where is it? A dot out. It's, 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 it's chilling out. right there, okay. and it's chilling on our sleep. Somehow we managed to make the kernel output an oops message by using the power of fork. Like, I know that was really tough. Yeah, it didn't. It didn't panic. Exactly. I've blown your mind, right? So that that works. So based on the prior stream, what would I want to do here? Why? Why do I want this? Oops. 
yeah, uh, to figure to figure out the base address. Like, are any of these uh, relevant? So I like R11. I like R11, right? Because uh, not all of these are. Uh, let's see. Let's go over here. The um, pseudo via debug. Mm -hmm. Not all of these. Someone says R10 is better. You know, I just can't win with you guys. Sooner or later, I'll just have to start ignoring chat. It becomes too much of a of a distraction. So R12, I think, is bad. Uh, how do I know R12 is bad? Well, it doesn't look like a kernel address. It starts with Fs, but it doesn't have enough Fs, right? And so if we were to take a look uh, using PT, and we say, where is that? It is in the FIS map. So that's not contiguous uh, with the kernel. And if we look at R11, which honestly R8, R10, and R11 all look to be pretty much right next to each other. So that's kind of a whatever. Uh, so PT has uh, R12 that is, in fact, contiguous with the kernel. Uh, so that is a good address. Then we want to know what is our magic offset. And so we can take our leak. We can subtract the base. And we find this is our magic constant. Where am I? So we have magic constant, which I'm going to also make a uint 64t. And that's going to equal what we found here. So how should I get this value from the oops back into my program? Really easy, really easy. Copy that. Well, the constant I can, I can put in my code. Right. But the leak is going to be uh, different every time I run. Right. So and that, that is, is something you, you, you might think is, OK, well, I can restart Copy and paste. Uh, yes, copy and paste. But you want to make sure that you're doing it in the same running instance. The reason I say that is the cache, remember, supports all processes. And so if you if you run, for instance, this once and then exit, and then pass in the address via R as an argument, the cache will be in a different state. And so you can end up in this place where you're chasing yourself because the cache is no longer in a known state. So you want everything to go in kind of a one shot fire, right? And so I want my program here, and after wait, uh, let's scan f percent LLX into, what did we call this, R11 leak. And we will make R11 leak be a uint 64 t So then we can say uint 64 t kern base is going to equal R11 leak minus magic constant. Right. Uh, and so we can go from here. That should be enough for you to carry on for the people that had the question. But uh, as long as we're plugging along here, I know the next thing that you're going to cry about. Um, so we can probably nip that in the bud. So what do we, once we have the kernel base, why do we care about that? Because it defeats KASLR, right? right. Um, and what we want to do is turn the heap, which we haven't done yet, uh, into a scenario where we have arbitrary read and write. Okay. Uh, and one of the things that we want to um, target, or one of the things we know we can target, uh, is mod probe path. Uh, so we can find mod probe path. Okay, all sims. Uh, grep mod probe path. Uh, I am not in the VM. Will you go into the VM? I don't know if you'll go into the VM. You will. Okay. Uh, cat rock. Okay, all sims. Grep mod probe path. All right. 
And what I care about here is not that literal value, but I need to contextualize that value based on my kernel leak. Pseudo VM bug. Uh, Twitch says, now we need to mangle the pointer. So we do, we do need to do that. Let's source opt pt dump pt dot pi. I run pt because I need that kernel base address again, and I'm going to print. This is my mod probe address, and I want to contextualize it against the kernel base. Oh no. GDB did really not like, did really not like that, uh, that space there. Okay, so there is my offset uh, UNT 64T. Uh, this is mod probe path offset. And so now I have that as well. So now we can define UN64T uh, mod probe path address dynamically. We can calculate it as current base plus the mod probe path offset. And that is what we want to point our allocation to. So we've done our math there. How do I create the arbitrary um, right primitive? So I can malloc, I can free, I can read, I can write. I need to get the heap to return a pointer that I care about. In this case, the pointer I care about is the mod probe path address, right? So if we were to, let's see, that goes there. I want, what do I want to do? Then has malloced some things. Let's open. Um, let me set FD equal to that. And then I need to open one more. Does that make sense? Let me think. We malloc there. No, that is not what I want to do. I want to... Oh, I want to free FD again. No, 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 we are already in that state because that is our next pointer there. Do I have a free function? Okay. So we can free slot FD. Like what we, we, we need to corrupt um, or uh, overwrite the next pointer with, in level five, um, a mangled um, address. So we should be able to get the mangled mod probe adder uh, is going to equal what? What times what? Have to go way up here. Uh, I'm sorry? Yes. Uh, so. The comment was the pointer with the random number uh, XORed with null. Yes, we yes. Uh, which we called leak2, uh, which we XOR that with mob probe path adder. Okay, I don't know if we need to do this free or not. I'm not visualizing this quite right, but I'm going to pretend we do. Uh, so then we have some magic function that I don't know the name of because functions are great. Uh, set next pointer. Uh, set next pointer 
to be our mangled mod probe adder, which I should probably define as a UN 64T. Then we write buff on FD, and this should uh, be overwriting that next pointer. So then, do I have the equivalent of a malloc? No, we're just using open. So then, if we open, where's my open? This is way harder for me to read than just having comments and, and <laughs> Uh, okay, so then we um, malloc twice, or allocate twice, um, and hopefully the second one um, is uh, mod probe path. This is probably going to explode. But uh, that is what we're going to do. Uh, what I would suggest is up here, do the equivalent of like a get char. So you could actually use get char, but I'm going to do this, All right? We, we're going to read from standard in, just saw some random character and this will block for us, right? Uh, because I want to have a friendly message uh, about to do the thing. Yeah, I'm betting on, on explode here. Uh, somebody says spawn a shell. No, you don't want a shell. Gosh dang it, Twitch. Uh, okay. Uh, where am I? This needs to all go away. You go away. Uh, VM restart. VM connect. We are here. Let's see if it compiles. Monpro path offset doesn't exist. Offset. Mod robe. There we go. VM connect. Let's see if we make it to the, the friendly message. Okay, so what is it waiting on right now? Uh, we put it down there at the end, but that's not where we're stuck. So we didn't include a friendly message here to say, um, give me R11 leak. Right? That's what we're blocked on right now. So uh, we can copy this from our VM logs. We can give that to it. And it looks like we blew up uh, before, beforehand, what did we blow up on? We blew up trying to allocate something. Uh, give him cash alloc. So I, let's see, are we malloking anytime after? So we know we're good up to here. And we want to take a look at... Um, give me R11 leak. We have all of these. We calculate this. We didn't get to here. You, you're fine. Right buff is fine. Do I not need to free that? That's the only thing that I'm doing that should mess that up. Oh, no, that doesn't feel like it should be right. Uh, VM restart. VM connect. This was from your life on four. Do pseudo power off. Guys, we have gone too far. All right. All right. So now we are back into this. We run our new version. Give me our 
11 leak. We grab our 11. Okay, so it was my free, and now it says we're about to do the thing. So we've blocked uh, right before uh, these open calls. And that is where we are interested. So we can now VM debug. One of the nice things here is I need to know where I want to break. Uh, what I'm interested in is the return value from Alec. So I do need to grab that from the inside the VM, proc KL sims, a grep kheap. But what I'm looking for is the kheap open because that is what we are triggering over here. And so we should have two calls to that. The first one shouldn't have anything too crazy. The second one should be the pointer that we are interested in if we're thinking about this correctly. So let's examine 20 instructions here at KE Open. Now we don't have symbols here, but if I look at Okay, heap open in our dissembler. We see the first call is print K. The second call is KMM cache alloc, and that is what I'm interested in. So we go to the second call. We grab that right there because the return value is going to be an RAX. So that's where I want to break. That look right. That looks right. We continue here, and then inside the VM, remember the uh, module has been blocked on that read the whole time, so we. Mash enter, hopefully the VM catches it. Looks like it does. If we print RAX, this is my first pointer uh, that was returned, which is not, did I print? I don't print it. I don't think this is, uh, yeah. This is anything interesting. Uh, we go a second time. We have blown up. Okay, why did we blow up? Uh, 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 uh. I don't know. But we can take a look here. I'm going to have offset current base plus that. We'll have to restart the VM and we'll have to reason about what is the next pointer from the first call of open. One more thing that I probably want to do is I want to print off a uh, mod probe path because if I print what my code thinks it is, then I can verify that I have this correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. We're about to do the thing. Let's mm -hmm. VM connect over here and make sure that we have recompiled. Give me the R11 leak, VM logs. Grab R11 leak. About to do the thing. And we will VM debug. I'll uh, continue for now because I got to grab that symbol. Twitch says this gives you flashbacks. Yeah. You know, sometimes, sometimes it's just work. Examine the 20 instructions right there. We said we want to be at the second call. Continue, get to the foreground, carry on. And what I'm interested in here is what is the next pointer from this allocation. So if I examine like 200 giant hex at RAX, 
I've got this. That is a strange looking value. Uh, what is my location there? Is this, did I print out? I printed out Mod Probe Path. Oh, you know what I didn't print out? Mod Probe Path Mangled. Um, let's see. If Mod Probe Path hasn't been clobbered, we should be able. Okay, so our math is bad on Mod Probe Path. Well, like this is this is what you do, right? You think about it. You're like, okay, where did it go wrong? Uh, did I print the mangled one? I don't think I did. Um, yeah, I, I printed the mod pro path address here. So something is off in our math here. Hmm. Uh, Let's see, I can't continue from here. So I think I need to let this blow up. We need to print out more values over here. Figure out what's wrong. So let's print F our current base. And let's print F. But we know that offset. So I think if I have current base, and then let's print off the mangled mod probe address. See if we can find that. Just so we have it. Okay. Connect to the VM. VM logs. Fire off there. Give the R11. And this isn't even the uh, point that I was. Uh, going to hit you with. Let's see. Okay, so there is what we think is the kernel base. So if we sudo vm debug, let's source our pt dump. Okay, kernel 98. Where am I at? That current base does not look happy at all. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, that 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 um, okay. So we, we did we did something something wrong there. So something whack with uh, okay. What is this minus? Oh, is this not? No, that looks same. Am I parsing this wrong? Am I scan F, scan F, R11 leak? Let's print F, R11 leak. Why is that math not working? Um, Base magic constant one B zero eight C twenty one B zero eight C twenty. Okay, we mathed correct there. R eleven. The only thing I can think of is if we're parsing this wrong with scan F. But what would be? What is the? Does it need to be? What's that? Uh, let's see. Yeah, we did. So, the other thing. Hmm. I 
is that current base is R11 weak. So we print the R11 weak. It's definitely where the problem is. Uh, let's see. Uh, you say percent P instead of LLX? We could. So you're saying that you think it's just a display issue because of the sign? That could be. But you'd still expect this. Like if that's true, then you'd want that to be percent P as well. Um, and you'd want that to be percent P as well. Recompile, fire it up. You say scan F, not print F. So scan F should read in the same number of bytes, right? Like that shouldn't matter. Um, like what matters is the displaying of it is my claim. Um, it's my R11. Uh, what did I get? R11 leak, turn base. It still looks like garbage. I don't think percent %p is what we want here in the scan app. Oh, you didn't print out the Yes. Okay. Oh, I didn't change this one. This is the one that I was interested in. How are we on time? Longer than I thought, but that's because we're stuck on something silly. Uh, somebody says, uh, but it parses it. Yeah, but in like a negative number has an equivalent um, positive number. Like I don't think the issue is in the reading, it's in the displaying. Fire off there, we grab our 11. Do we get something that looks sane? Uh, what do I get? Montreux path, you don't look right. Montreux, that's the mangled one. That didn't recompile because I added new lines. Uh, we have stop. RM ADA out. So what we want is to make sure that we are mathing correctly here to get my pro path. Hopefully we get past this. We can find the error that I actually want to run into. Crimp still looks like garbage. Hmm. I am going to take a quick look at something. Give me one sec. We have the power now to hit this button and Bam, and we're back. Okay, we just saved all of us a ton of time uh, by, by referencing something right here. Scanf doesn't take the integer. It takes the address of the integer. And this is why everything is going bad. Oh uh, yeah, you say that right now. I see it now. 
You know, there, there's a delay on both sides here between what uh, what you do and what I do. Uh, VM restart, classic blunder. I, I don't know how many years now I've made that mistake, like live on stream. Uh, you know, if, if you guess enough things, eventually it'll be right. It was like your sixth guess, right? Okay, does that look? Give me R11, VM logs, we find R11. Okay, I think that looks like a kernel address. We have like an extra X chilling over here. It doesn't hurt anything. That looks like it could be a kernel address, a kernel base, right? And mod probe path looks like it could be a mod probe path. So let's go and verify some of these things. Okay, so if I examine the string at that address, I do, in fact, get the mod probe path, so we are calculating that correctly. And then if we ignore, and if, because I'm calculating that correctly, I have to be doing the kernel base correctly, right? Um, because I'm using kernel base to find mod probe path. So that makes sense. Now, I still want to get uh, KL sims and we grep for k heap and so we are on the k heap open that is what i want to break on so now we are making progress and i want to break where am i examine 20 instructions from the open this time, instead of breaking right after, I'm going to set a breakpoint on the call and then a second one right after. So 90 and 95. Okay. Now we go here. Oh, no. Wait, no, I can still get what I want. No, I can't. Freaking KASLR, man. Um, so that one is worthless to me because I can't get what I want. This one is the first pointer that's returned. And then if I examine like 200 giant hex from RAX, we should find our mangled next pointer right here. Is that what I have? 551D BCFD. Okay, so then if we continue onward, do we hit it? Okay, we get to the next call. And so that is a good thing. Then when I continue on, I think I'm going to explode. No, okay. Uh, REX, we have gotten it. 20 giant hex at and we examine the string at that location. So now we've returned mod probe path, right? Success. I lost all that time over the freaking ampersand. It's kind of, man. Okay, so now that I can get this to return, what do I want to do with that allocation? Well, we want to write uh, something. We talked about mod probe path a little bit, and this is where we will uh, leave things. Uh, once I show why this works, but doesn't work. Um, because this is the happy path so far. Uh, what is our goofy function that we've made? I want to write buff. No, I need a new function. I don't have a function that, that lets me write at the beginning of my buffer. So we need yet another function, guys. Man, how did I mangle the pointer? We did that like an hour ago, man. We, Come on. We zorded it with the thing we got. All right. 
the, this line right here, uh, our second thing that we leaked at the very beginning was uh, this right here. Uh, we leaked the mangled, um, it says mangled, it doesn't need to say mangled, uh, but we leaked the address of the pointer XOR with null XOR with random. Uh, yeah, I'm going to do like most of the level and then uh, then you're just going to get stuck and it'll be fun. So uh, right here, what we are leaking is the address of a pointer where the pointer is null along with a random value. Now, where did I get that from? I got that from this right here. So I looped through and filled the slab because I did eight allocations. I then freed one, which means the free list just has one slot on it. And the next pointer is going to be null. Then when I do the use after free read, I can read that mangled next pointer. And because it is the last item, it's the only item, but the fact that that is important, because it is the last item on the free list, the pointer that is being mangled is null, which is the value that you use to do mangle. Oh no, camera, don't go too far. Okay, uh, from here, what can we do? We want, you know what, I don't, I don't care about your, uh, your functions. All right, I am, I am, I have to stop listening to Twitch chat. It, it just, it becomes a problem. Um, we'll do home hacker, um, my script dot sh. And then I write buff on, is it FD? Yeah, I think that's what I have for my function. Yes. Uh, so what I'm doing here is I'm copying the string to the beginning of the buffer. Uh, then when I trigger the ioctl here with my write buff, that should write the string uh, home hacker myscript.sh to the location that is a uh, mod probe path here. Okay. Um, However, there will be a problem, as we will see. All right, now after mod probe is set, just as like a general feeling here, what do we, what do we want to do? Uh, we want to call system and open or run some uh, magic that is unknown, All right? We, um, Talked a little bit about how that works already um, in the last stream, so I don't think triggering that mechanism uh, is, is critical here. So I'm going to use a uh, string copy to this, and what I want to show, let me think real quick. Um, so this will fail. Uh, puts uh, doing the big sleep. Okay. So I then need to make my some magic. Oh, uh, yeah, I want to put that in my home directory and make this be uh, home hacker, some magic that is unknown. Cool. So we should be feeling pretty good about that. I think, where am I? Over here. Uh, yes, and then I need myscript.sh to do something. So let's also make, do it over here, um, my script.sh, uh, that's from something else. Uh, we'll say bin bash, and right, let's just touch temp, uh, home hacker, 
um, much success. Okay, so uh, based on our understanding of how ModPro path works, this should work in theory based on what I showed you. It will not. It will not, and I know it will not. Um, and the amazing part is I'll show you that it won't work, and then I'm just going to say figure it out. As long as it fails in the correct way. As long as it fails, oh, in, the, fails in the way that I intend for you to run into, um, that, then it'll be, it'll be a good time. If it fails in some other way, like a scan F, I can't write a scan F, that's a totally different matter. Because I imagine uh, people that have plugged along on this have ran into this, this exact like moment in time. And so I, I'm going to show you that I can get to exactly where you are, tell you that this is the correct path. Um, okay. Did this fail in the way that I expected to? Mm, no, did not. We're about to do the thing. Did we overwrite that? I don't know. Can I debug this? Yes, I can. Let's take a quick look at mod pro path. Did we get what we wanted? We did not. Why? What did I do? Uh, string copy, this is the open. We string copy into buff. That's fine. This is going to be something goofy with our functions. Um, what is that length? That is a good question. The question is what is our length? Our request length has been uh, 1d0 for the duration. So yeah, that's at the beginning of buffer size. That should cover. That should. Uh, so we want to write it at the beginning of our buffer. So we set it so that mod probe path uh, return or is returned by that second allocation, right? Okay, so like we we look at mod probe path location, we'll be over it with like. Uh, so one of the things, which is what I was going to try and hit on, is this line right here, which I can't make bigger, but it is an important line. Uh, so every time that we allocate something, uh, we call memset and set every byte to zero for that section. Right. right? And so right now, when I look at, uh, where was I? Right here, when I look at what is the value of uh, mod probe path, this makes me think we obtained the allocation, right. we zeroed it, and we failed to write. Yeah, that makes sense. Now, I can't explain why that is the case. So we have to go back here, and now that everything is a wonderful function, Let's think about that. Uh, let's get out of here, VM restart, get out of all that noise, compile. I don't want to know about all of the crazy warnings. And I guess I could include string.h, but uh, somebody says, sometimes the challenge just acts weird. Well, the 
the challenge itself does behave reasonably. The problem is if you, which I don't think I did there, if you try and run your exploit more than once, you can end up in a wonky state. If I get my R11 leak, fire that in there. I'm about to do the thing. Let's get our symbols here. Proc k all sims. Then we want k heap. What I'm interested in is this address here. Examine the instructions at this location. I'm not in GDB. Uh, VM debug. I just imagine I'm in GDB in random terminals now. Every terminal. Every terminal could be GDB if you want it to be. And we are interested in what happens right around here. And I'm also interested in what happens in the ioctal. Oh, wait. Did I do it again? Right? In my right buff? I did. No, I didn't. Dang it. It is the address of request. Okay. I was like, that would have been great if it was just another ampersand. Um, yeah, okay, so we want to break at, that's the pointer that's returned. And the other thing that I'm interested in is what's going on when this ioctal happens. Examine, uh, once only wrote home hack. No, I think you're talking about your problem, not mine. Okay, uh, 20 instructions at this location. Did I grab the wrong one? Probably. Uh, examine 90 instructions here. And I need to know in ioctal, where is that right? Okay, heap ioctal, because what I'm giving it is right buff on FD, right buff is going to call 5701. I have like a second buff. No, okay. 5701, which is, I need to look at the disassembly here. Uh, 5701, we jump to E2. E2 is right here. Uh, okay, so that's nice. You are the second call from the bottom ending in E2. So we have call, we have call. Am I looking at the right spot? Show me E2. It's this one right here. This is that call. So this ends in E2. I don't know if you can see it. And that is the E2 from right here. So I'm just looking at the uh, end of it there. So we should be able to break at the E9, which is that call. Okay, now we trigger. The first value return should be a valid pointer which it looks like a valid pointer. The next thing we should see is mod probe path being returned, which we do. Okay, we are at the copy now. This copy inside the kernel, it looks like it is doing what it's supposed to do, right? We're copying. Yeah. The string into here, this is going to be like I it failed to update the binary when it decompiled or something. Um, because that address here is our mod probe path on the left hand side. Yes, it is. So this should be good. Okay. And now, now we get this. Okay. So yeah, I code was right. I, I just didn't, one of the things that can happen is that if the VM is still running the binary, then you try and recompile it. The compiler can't overwrite the file that's in use being ran. And so you could run into an issue there. 
uh, which is probably what happened. I had my actions out of order because I didn't substantially change anything about the code here. Uh, but what we should have when we look on how we failed, how did we fail? Oh, okay, so we didn't fail yet how I want. Gosh dang it. Okay, so then over here, let's, while I'm waiting, we can restart. We shouldn't need a debug. We can chmod plus x. Uh, what is this thing? Some magic that is unknown. VM connect. I hopefully don't need to attach a debugger to this. That's still a good practice, like to know how to attach it and then kind of reason about what you're looking at. Um, all right, fired again. Give me R11. About to do the thing, doing the sleep, and we are killed. Okay. Why? This is where I wanted to get. So I was there. So we did everything right here, but we still blew up. We still failed, right? Uh, we got we got killed here. This is intended. Uh, yes, we are looking at what I want you to look at. This is a valid error. This is why we're erring. And you should look at this and think about what I've said on this stream. And like what needs to occur. So the error here is that there's a null pointer D reference. And what did I say about when we open something. When we open the kernel device, we memset zero hex one D zero bytes from what we've opened, from what we've allocated. Oh, there's more at that location than just on paper. There's probably other stuff that we've zeroed out. We overwrote a bunch of stuff, right? And so what I'll leave you with here, as far as, hey, Robert, you didn't solve all of it, is how do you fix that? You can fix that. Figure out what it is that needs to get fixed, and then fix it. If you do that, then the rest of this mechanism will succeed. Twitch chat I, I, I can't I can't help you there, Twitch, right? <laughs> you you accidentally fixed it and maybe, you know, if you're just arbitrarily like running stuff and getting the heap into crazy states and like that's that's all on you. All right. Uh, then, then this has been um, despite the fact that I, I missed scan F there, a relatively deterministic march forward as far as what am I doing, why am I doing it, um, what's happening, and what am I thinking. Hopefully that was uh, helpful. I just, because I just wanted to make sure that people are aware if you reach this point uh, where you encounter... Oh, can I hit the buttons? VM logs, where you encounter the null pointer dereference. Where would she go? Uh, 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 uh. You guys saw it though, right? 
Uh, right there. Okay. You encountered this null pointer D reference. You are on the right track. Just fix it. Make it not be a null pointer D reference. Okay. Uh, does anyone have any other questions? I know you guys were on three, but hopefully you saw somewhat how this relates. Yeah. Uh, I think the, in the prior stream, I described like nice little diagrams uh, as far as how you can make the slots overlap with each other. Um, I like that for level three because you don't need to do this mod pro path stuff. Um, okay, uh, if nobody has anything else, Twitch has nothing. These guys are good. Uh, this will be a uh, great stream. Is there a way to do this without copying and pasting R11? Uh, there is, but that is out of scope for what we're trying to play around with in this module. Right? Like there's kind of like how when we had a T-cache heap and then we said, hey, this is what's beyond there. Right? For this module in particular, the thing that we're trying to uh, mess around with and think about are the slots uh, that exist on the slab and the metadata as far as the next point or how those things relate. Uh, but there definitely are other ways um, to exploit the heap that we have not talked about and I don't think we're going to, uh, simply, because, simply because it would be a bit messier. Um, so like in the first set of slides here, there's this right here. And I say for this module, we're gonna focus on the stuff on the left, the slab that is in use. As long as we were focusing on the slab in use, as far as I'm aware, the answer is no. But if we start thinking about stuff that is outside of that green box, uh, then there are ways um, to take advantage of this um, without getting the oops leak. But since we aren't uh, really covering that, I'm gonna leave it there. Uh, you certainly uh, can look it up and probably uh, figure it out if you are clever. Uh, somebody here on Twitch says, loving the content and the site. I'm glad to hear it. Uh, you know, we are always uh, you know, looking forward to people going through this content and cruising along. Uh, with that, I will leave you all. I appreciate everyone hanging out. Uh, goodbye and good 